Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're covering 10 essential Microsoft Excel functions. We're gonna be using a sample CSV that has credits and deposits that lists revenues and expenses for a business. Before we jump into the video, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows Server, remote desktop licenses, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software. We'll put links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, guys, so here we are on my fake tax analysis. I actually generated this with ChatGPT, the new 4.0 model. So um, comment down below if you guys want to see more content on ChatGPT. All right, let me take care of some basic formatting for this sheet really quick. All right, so we've got a column here with our debits, a column here with our credits. And what I would like to see is the total revenue. This is going to be the total number of credits. This is like gross revenue here. I also want to see total expenses. So we're going to start with a fairly basic function to Excel. It's called the sum function. So we'll hit the equal sign to get it started. We'll type sum and then just do an open parentheses. This is going to allow us to select a range. Next, I'll select the credit range and I'll go all the way down to the bottom. It'll automatically slow down as we start to get close to the bottom and we have our entire range selected. I'll press enter. Okay. This is going to come up with a number of our total revenues here based on this credit column. Again, we're showing you guys how to analyze data. Please note that none of this data is accurate or real. We just want to show you guys how to analyze data when you do have a real uh, set of information. Okay. We're going to do the same thing with our expenses, otherwise known as our debits. So in this box, I'll do some again with the open parentheses and I'll drag down. Oops, sorry. I messed that up some and then the open parentheses. Then I'll drag down the entire range of, of uh, debits. Okay, there we go. And we'll press enter. And then we could do a simple one here if we wanted to calculate our gross profit. And let me just make this match really quick. Again, we type the equal sign. And we can here we can actually type the cell. So K2 minus L2. And that's our gross profit number. Now, another valuable bit of information for me, for example, if this was my business, might be my average purchase value. Let's just assume that each of the credits is a purchase as I'm a service business. Okay. So if I type in this box here, average open parentheses. Let's grab the entire range from the credit once again. This is going to give us the average of this entire data set. Now, for whatever reason, ChatGPT gave us the same number on all of our transactions. And so that is the average in this case. But if you have some variability, it's going to show you an average of these actual numbers. The third function we're going to show you guys is minimum slash maximum. So I'm just typing min and max expense here. And I want to know what my smallest expense was and I want to know what my largest expense was. So in this box, I'll hit equals, turns the smallest number of the set of values. We can see that in the open parentheses here and I'll drag down the range of the debits. Okay, get down all the way to the bottom. I'll press enter. So our smallest expense was 1058. Let's do the same for the max. So equals max, we'll open parentheses. We'll grab the debits again and we'll hit enter. So now we can see both our largest and smallest single transaction. Next up, we have a function called counta. Now this function can either be count or counta. Counta with an A at the end will give us the number of non-empty cells in a list. And then the simple count function will just count the numbers. So this could help me know how many sales I had, right? So let's say how many sales did I have? So I'll hit count and then I'll select all my credits, control shift, down arrow to select the rest of the range, a little keyboard shortcut there, and I'll hit enter. So as we can see, if I'm scrolling up my range, anywhere where it says nan, I think this is some sort of like, I think this is a, another way of saying zero here. That is not being counted by this function, which is exactly what we want. It's counting the numbers. So in terms of numbered entries, we have 255. All right, next up, just to show you guys a quick example here, let's say we have a first name and a last name, right? So we've got name columns and it's split into first and last. There might come a time where you need actually just wanna combine these so that John plus Martin would be in just one cell. And it's fairly easy to do that. I can make a new column here that says full name, right? Let me just add a few more examples here. So for example, I wanna create a function that combines the first and last name. All right, so in order to create this function, I'll do equals and we'll type in C-O-N-C-A-T. We'll open our parentheses again, and then we'll select our two names and we'll press enter. 
Now that combines into a full name and then I could drag down. So if I click this little box here and I drag it down, it'll do the same thing to Calvin Smith and to the rest of the data if I had it. All right, let's say you import data from a few different sources and you have some weird spacing stuff going on between some of the text. So let me just create some errors here. Okay, I'll create some spaces. Maybe I'll do some over here as well. Now there's a function that will actually just clean all of this up, right? So, so I could basically replicate this table here and it would just trim out the weird spacing or anything that is inconsistent with the rest of our data. So equals trim, open parentheses, and we'll just select our range. Let's say I just wanna do from here to um, right here where I put those errors, right? Okay, I'll hit enter and it's gonna recreate that table while fixing the inconsistent spacing and formatting. Okay, next up we have a formula called left, right, and mid. So it's all kind of the same thing. What we can do is extract a certain amount of data from a cell starting from the left or from the right or from the middle. To better explain this, an easy example would be to extract the area code from a phone number. That would be the first three number digits from the left. In my example, we could use it to extract the X's or the empty characters from the account number column here. So in my example, we would go left, open parentheses. I would select the entire range of which I want to do this for. Control shift down arrow. Yep, we have that range selected. I'll go ahead and scroll back up to that cell that we just entered the function to. We'll do a comma and then the number of characters that we want to extract. So one, two, three, four, five, six X's before we have a number. So I'll put six and that's it. And I'll hit enter. All right. And since these are all identical, this is what I'm getting. Uh, returned. Now I could do the opposite and just go from the right and extract, let's say the last four. So I could change this to right and I'll change this number to four. So this gives us the last four digits of each of those account numbers. Next up we have upper, lower, and proper. This is going to allow us to change the capital letters to create consistent formatting in our data set. For example, I want the NAN here that's coming up in this column to be proper. So I'll hit equals proper, open parentheses. We'll select this entire range here and I'll hit enter. And then this is going to return the NAN values with a capital N. If we did caps, it would be all caps. Or if we did lowercase, it would be all lowercase. And the other functions are just lower and upper. So lowercase and upper. All right, guys. And the final function we're going to cover today is now and today. So if I type in now, this will return the current date and time formatted as a date and time. All right, in order to use this function, we would type in now, open parentheses and enter. This is gonna return the current date and time. Now we can also add to the end of this formula. So for example, if I wanna do minus 14, so two weeks ago, I'll hit enter and it'll return that date. This is helpful for time stamping reports or something of that nature. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions about any of those functions, drop those in the comment section below. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Again, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Office or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software. We'll put links down below. We strongly encourage any specific video topic ideas you may have. And lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support the channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.